Okay, hey, welcome to another episode of On the Wrist from Off the Cuff. Today, I have a really cool premiere for you from the brand Foster. They're a new enthusiast founded brand for 2022. Yes, and if you're watching this in 22, it's that new. Uh, if you're watching this in the future, well, tell me how it's going. <laughs> All right, now in terms of the type of watch, this is, of course, a dive watch, some key common characteristics and design language. You're looking for a diver, you're going to want water resistance. Typically, there's some type of screw down crown. You're going to want something that's tough, legible with a dive time bezel, and a diver's extension is always nice. This is the 11 Atmos Skin Diver in black, and it's their debut watch. The 11 Atmos Skin Diver harkens back to skin divers of the late 60s and, and early 70s when incredible mechanical watches were affordable, accessible, and refused to take themselves too seriously. This is gonna be going for $500 direct, and it is pretty sweet. I actually had the pleasure of meeting with the mind behind Foster um, at uh, this year's uh, Notice Intersect uh, kind of annual get together. Uh, and there was a couple of brands featured. Definitely check the channel history, the shorts, because I got some covers, uh, you know, I got some coverage there. Um, so you can kind of get a little peek behind what that looked like. I'm looking forward to next year. I'm sure it's gonna be even bigger. Now, speaking of Notice, this actually kind of like the aesthetic even from like the naming and the font used it, it just it feels like a, a notice like meets raven and those are two cool watches from two cool brands um and those guys all know each other uh which i think is awesome so uh, take that for what you will but if you like raven watches and you like notice watches you're probably gonna dig this foster <laughs> let's just face it um it's it's really cool and well spec. So with all that said, let me just jump right into it. Zoom the camera out, get this piece in hand, and take a closer look. All right, guys. So there's some things that I really love about this watch, and there's also some things that are a surprising choice that maybe I wouldn't make. Um, but I will say I definitely like the stuff that I like a lot more than the stuff that I was just kind of, oh, it's just one thing, all right? They don't use sapphire, all right? Let's just get it out of the way. They're not using sapphire, they're using acrylic. So for those of you that like acrylic, enjoy, have at it. But for those of us that are big sapphire freaks, this isn't it, this is not, this just, you don't get that, all right? But the cool thing about acrylic is, of course, that you can polish it. So although it can damage easier in terms of surface damage and scratches, um, it, you can fix it, right? So that's cool, I get that, I dig that. Um, and you can't do that with Sapphire, right? Which is gonna be more prone to shattering. It, even mineral will be more prone to shattering than an acrylic. An acrylic is gonna be the most shock and shatter resistant. So if you look at that on a scale, you're gonna have acrylic on one side, super shock and shatter resistant, but going to be more easily scratched and scuffed. And then you get mineral in the middle. It's gonna be a little bit less shatter uh, prone and uh, it's gonna be a little bit less, uh, you know, able to scratch and scuff. And then you get on the other end, you know, sapphire, which you can't really mess up unless you shatter it, right? Uh, so unless it'll take a big impact uh, to get that to crack. So have at that, uh, but I just wanna get that out there. That was like the one thing where I was just kinda like, ooh, could have been, could have went a different way, but again, that's my personal, again, there's a huge, I mean, honestly, I would prefer acrylic over mineral. So I just like that it's on the other end of the spectrum, right? So if if you're not, you know, looking for this the resilience of a sapphire in terms of just uh, the clarity and whatnot, um, you'll like this because you it's gonna be almost impossible to shatter this acrylic crystal. So now that that's out of the way, personal stuff, personal dramas, traumas, uh, 39 millimeter diameter, 12 millimeter stick, and that's including that uh, crystal, which I'm gonna sneeze now. No, I'm gonna hold it. It's gonna go away. I'm just gonna, okay, cool. I'm back. So this thing is super thin, 12 millimeters, and that's again with the crystal, which that's one of the, so when you hear 11 Atmos and you're like, oh, so not super deep, yeah. 110 meters of water resistance. That's totally cool. Honestly, like it has a screw down crown, so that 
and 100 meters to me with a screw down crown is all you're ever going to need for me to feel like it's really a dive watch i'm i skew towards 150 like if i was designing my own dive watch and i was trying to get as thin as possible i would want it to be at least 150 meters just so i could feel like it is absolutely a dive watch but i will say there's plenty of divers that have 100 meters of water resistance especially if you are making something that's more retro right so the 110 is fine 11 at most does the job and it sounds cool you know 11 at i feel like it's just it really makes at most feel like the words at and most together like at most so 11 at most is how much i pick no i don't know why it just takes me there so i'm sorry guys it's it's the weekend i'm feeling good it's my son's birthday weekend um so at least while i'm filming this <laughs> So the the crystal is acrylic and double domed and the nice thing about this is check that out Look at that. There's no milkiness that you do get with sapphires It's just optically Super clear and less reflective than if you had a sapphire That was in this exact same shape if it was a sapphire one it'd be a lot more expensive uh, in terms of production <laughs> Which means it would cost more when they sold it, but uh, it would be uh, Visually it wouldn't be as clear it would have a bit of milkiness in this uh, Contouring that's happening and also it would be way more reflective So even without a reflective coating that I'm aware of this actually isn't super reflective at all like that's another uh, positive note about acrylic crystals, so there's a lot there to like I'm healing I'm getting over it Okay the bezel, this is something I love. Bi-directional, because it should be, because this is a 12-hour traveler's bezel. But 48 click, guys, they did it right. A brand new brand that didn't really have to, that probably could have saved some money and said, just make it a 120 or a 60 click, unidirectional, and people will just ratchet it all the way around. No. Here you can use this the way it's meant to be used, which is, hey, I'm in California. I'm flying to uh, Texas. Boom. Oh, okay. I'm going to go leave Texas. I'm going to go to New York. Bam. Ah, how cool. Just see how easy that is. Oh, okay. I'm already, I'm flying back to Cali. Boom. So super intuitive, amazing tactile engagement there, guys. Very minute play if you can call it that one piece bezel so there's no insert it's just one bezel it's coated and it's it has a beautiful engraving of course uh looks very very nice okay the movement inside miota 90s5 so it's the no date model so that's great so there's be no ghost position here uh solid Everything uh, including the case backs all links as well and links and you're getting quick release and links and with this Skin diver style of case where it has more of a flat edge That means anything you put on here is gonna fit and look great So whether it be a tropic strap an isoframe or just a you know waffle style or any one of those straps where it's not gonna be the actual brand uh, or even just a vintage leather yes guys this will look great on a vintage leather strap. So it is a dive watch by heart, but it also, again, harkens back to that throwback look. And a lot of these watches do look great. So these styles of skin diver watches tend to look great on a strap. And this would be great because it uses 20 millimeter lugs and they're drilled. Come on, enthusiasts run. They just, they do the, what they, they do what you want because they, they want it too, right? So can't get mad at that you're getting a solid jubilee bracelet that tapers down to 16 millimeters again enthusiast touch 16 millimeters yes it would have been cheaper to have less of a taper because then you're getting tooling you're not worrying about the tooling for all these individual links that are going to go down even further now so that does cost a bit more but man does it help it wear better look at that beautiful very nice and refined the clasp again this is pre-production uh, which i don't even know if i mentioned that yet this is a prototype this is a traveling prototype <laughs> um it's it's great but i will say which i've used uh, a clasp just like this i want to say raven uses a similar clasp this one's a little bit sticky 
it's like uh, in terms of opening and closing it's a little bit tight a little bit too tight so when i say sticky i mean it sticks it's not like gross and like tactile like sticking to my finger um just this connector here to there is a little bit stiff i don't know how that's going to be on the production model but i will say on this uh, pre-production prototype a little tight i hope it's not that tight on the regular one but other than that thing is sweet guys you're getting of course some nice manual micro adjust spaces so you can size this perfectly on your wrist you're getting it of course also nicely signed and this is a very unoffensive uh, you know style of clasp it does the job perfectly and it doesn't take up too much space and I'm sure it doesn't add to the cost too much but it is all milled and you know it, it hits the all of those wickets as well so with all that said let's actually get this piece on wrist and see how it wears okay check that out whoo yes that wears good even if I get it up close to the camera and there's all that lens distortion it makes it look a little oversized still sits pretty nice and centered on the wrist but what I'll do is I'll just keep my hand down here. You can see kind of perspective looks definitely a lot better size now. And then if I tighten up the frame, you guys will be able to get some nice detail shots while still keeping a decently realistic aspect ratio on how this will actually wear and look. Let me actually give it a couple of quick little dusts off there. It deserves it. Check that out. That is a looker, guys. Again, unoffensive, unassuming, understated. This thing is just smooth, man. Check that out. That bezel action is great. The fonts that are used are all nice. The marking, the line weight, the widths. It just feels very, very well put together, well themed, and well executed. You can see it just melts into the wrist. Look at how thin that rides. Holy cow. I mean, actually, I might have to zoom the camera out just to let it focus. Whoa, I said out to let it focus a little bit better on how well that looks. Check that out. Now that is wrapping on the wrist. That is hugging the wrist. That is an alien on your wrist, symbiotically bonding with you, creating a love child on your wrist. Look at that. It is straddling your wrist. <laughs> so yes it's it fits really well yeah this is this is a good review i'm having fun so yeah i dig this one you can see really great wonderful articulation there um you're getting great mobility range of motion and this thing is not really getting in the way at all um which is fantastic and that's part of what makes this beautiful taper down to 16 so important, that range of motion. It's not pinching or anything. So you can actually wear the, 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 the bracelet itself a little bit tighter than you would with a non-tapering bracelet or just a lightly tapering bracelet. So really, really dialed in. And you know, even though you're not getting some fancy, uh, I mean, honestly, some really fancy quick adjust style clasp wouldn't even make sense with this simple back to basics diver uh, slash travel watch which i mean it's just smart and that's just smart um yeah it, it just comes together really great but let's actually get this off the wrist uh set it up for some loom shots little light transition and closing thoughts okay let's go ahead and hit the lights here hey, hey! check that out yes okay some of you were like what about the bezel why is there not illuminated pip okay i get it it's a it's it's also a traveler's bezel guys so if you're going to use this as a dedicated diver yeah the dive time bezel isn't really going to work for you but that's only in pitch black that's like and honestly are, are you going to be doing this at night with this i mean come on there's if you're doing this in beautiful you know uh clear fantastic waters then you're still going to be able to see and you could use it rudimentarily to, to track time and, and you could still get your clicks over and it would be fine. Um, but the cool thing is on a day to day basis when you're able to use a 12 hour probably more often than you will. So that's the trade off. Um, but again, I mean, the Panerais don't have dive time bezels and people love calling those dive watches because they are so 
you know, although it's a nice to have, it's not necessarily a must. But I will say what is a must is Amazing Loom, and check that out. Great orientation, you can know where the 12, the three, the six, the nine are versus the two or the one or the seven. So that is really outstanding. You can see that seconds hand is just sweeping right along so you know that your movement still has power reserve and is still chugging along and you don't have to worry about your watch being dead underwater. So you don't have to worry about being dead underwater either. But one thing I do like to incorporate of course is going to be the low light transition Cajado is going to be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight a lot of the times you're going to find yourself coming in and out of buildings walking underneath overhangs you know sitting out chilling underneath the shade of a tree or maybe just in your favorite automobile so it's nice to see what these colors finishes and textures render like in less than optimal light. To maybe even include some harsh lighting here, very high contrast, which will typically expose any type of production defects. But you can see here that brushing is very uniform as the light just chugs over that, gleaming. And then look at the dial, very cool. That matte finish, there's a point when it really can wash out. As you can see here, where it's quite reflective. But even then, it's you can still see the hands. And you can still see a good amount of the indice. So I don't think you're gonna have to worry about this situation. You know, very oh look at that. It's just a very small window too, because if I go just any amount away from look at that's the difference. It goes back to being legible again. So very, very cool. Look at that. You can see even see, even though it's not loomed, look at that. Barely any light. You're seeing the 12, the one, two, three, all the way around. So that bezel is still quite legible in terms of the indexing that's there, even though it's meant for more traveling, because this is, you know, a great vacation kind of companion watch. It gives you all those great skin diver vibes without having to worry about some old non-hacking, uh, super collectible movement or something that somebody's gonna steal from you because they think that they can sell it for a ton of money. So very, very cool from that perspective. Guys, closing thoughts on the wrist, really classic proportions. I know I say that a lot, but in this case, again, it's a classic proportion. <laughs> um, and it's gonna fit a lot of different situations. And I think because of the monochromatic layout, um, it's going to really blend and mesh well. And again, it just, it looks quite mid-century, but also it has some great modern touches in terms of the aesthetics in the way that uh, the dials laid out, in the way that the fonts uh, and the numerals styles were chosen. So it, it does zhuzh it up quite a bit. In terms of model variants, guys, there will be some, two other limited edition dials. This is the main dial, which they'll have plenty of, but limited, there'll be a green dial and an orange dial option. So check at some point there'll be links for this. Uh, I think right now I'll probably only be able to link you to their Instagram so you can stand by for more. That's because that's how early I'm on this bandwagon, guys. These guys are really in early stages and I'm already impressed. So um, comparable models, there's definitely a lot of competition at the $500 price point, guys. Let's be quite honest. Um, but for me, the, ele the 11 Atmos really keeps pace by offering just this handsome balance um, of design, I think, um, that I think from afar might read a bit plain, but up close, I think uh, there's just a tons of fun little details and quirks that you can really, I think that will make this still a fun, enjoyable watch for years and years to come. So guys, bottom line, really well executed, thoughtfully designed, and absolutely I'd say a solid value, even though you didn't get the Sapphire, uh, which would have been nice um, maybe one day. Hey, maybe if this sells a bunch, uh, we can convince them to, to try a Sapphire Crystal. Um, or everyone in the comments can just be mad at me for trying to ruin one of the few awesome uh, watches that still offer an acrylic crystal. And I know everybody wants to get the most out of all the polishing compound that they bought on Amazon. So. You need more watches with these crystals. Once you got one, once you get one Hesselite, then you got to get them all. 
so that you can use that polishing compound <laughs> on other stuff, right? So that's fair. That's for the watch lover, for the collector. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you like the video, please do it like. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys.